Hi everybody, and uh, and, and welcome to the uh, to the afternoon session uh, and uh, after lunch here live from uh, from Rome at uh, at uh, CC um, uh, Infrastructure Summit uh, in Rome, uh, kindly hosted by uh, by Marco. So uh, welcome to to all of you here in the audience. Welcome uh, to 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 Rene here. Welcome to uh, to Arthur and uh, and Bernard uh, virtually uh, there with us, and of course. To all of you out there, welcome to this uh, welcome to this session, and uh, thank you for uh, thank you for joining. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, ladies and gentlemen, about the new business models uh, to meet cable operators and ISPs, future connectivity and digital demand. A mouthful, but we'll uh, we'll uh, bring this to you in in forty five minutes, and hopefully you will uh, learn something from it. And uh, and the experts in the panel are more than happy to to, to share their knowledge with you. Um, but before going into it, um, uh, I would I would like to uh, to to uh, give a quick uh, moment for our uh, panelists to introduce themselves. Um, Bernard, if I may start with you, welcome. Good afternoon. So yeah, Bernard Push. Uh, I based in Paris. Uh, look after Telstra's global internet strategy. So that means all of our internet uh, sales and peering. Uh, have been in the industry uh, around, well, 20 years as a provider, before that another 10 years uh, in equipment provision. Um, my area of expertise, I guess, is, is Asia Pacific, which uh, is where Telstra operates. We have about 30% of the submarine cable market in um, intra-Asia, uh, about uh, between... 10 and 20 percent, depending on the routes uh, on Trans-Pacific. So, so we're a major uh, operator in that part of the world, uh, and um, we've certainly seen our network grow fantastically over the last year. Partly due to, uh, unfortunately, everyone's pain uh, of being locked down and uh, COVID, but uh, it's definitely shown us maybe what the future looks at, looks like a little bit. So, um, and, and um, yeah, how we need to be ready for rapid change uh, of which there will likely be more, I think. So, uh, but I'm sure we'll get onto that during the discussion. So uh, thank you uh, for inviting me and um, I'll pass on to the next. Thank you so much, uh, Bernard. And uh, let's go to Lisbon, to, uh, to Arthur, welcome. Oh, welcome. Thank, thank you, first of all, for inviting me to, to be with you guys. It's always a pleasure. Uh, Arthur Mendes, uh, VP Sales of Fundola Cables, um, with more than 20 years experience in telecommunications. Uh, also on the hardware side, let's say like that, been uh, uh, having 12 years with Nokia. And then uh, specific consumer in cables now for almost, I don't know, nine years. Um, with uh, and with Angola Cables, this, this project that is um, a company created in 2009 that starts operation in 2012. Um, and uh, we participate in three uh, submarine cables, walks connecting to three European countries and 11 African countries from the UK to South Africa. They are one of the main investors. Then we built it SACS, South Atlantic Cable System, the first ever made in the South Hemisphere connecting Angola to Brazil. This was totally new route, a new experience in doing that, and then and then building also together with Google or God and Intel, uh, the money from um, Santos, São Paulo coast area to Fortaleza and up to 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 Boca and to Miami, and then of course two data centers as well that we made it one in Angola, one in in, in Brazil, and 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 the, everything have started from from that point of view and trying to push for telecommunications in Africa. Uh, there's a huge potential for the future, and I've been trying to to participate and to give our end uh, to that development and that needs. Thank you very much, and uh, and welcome to you as well, Arthur. Thank you for for being here, and uh, and Bernard. So over to my live panelist guest, Rene. Please. Great, great to be here. Uh, my name is Rene de Bademacher. Uh, I work for Experio. Uh, Experio is the global managed internet service provider. Um, I'm very happy to be here in person. Thank you for Sparkle for hosting this event uh, in the beautiful room. Of course, the weather is great. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to have a, a nice chat on uh, how the uh, subsea cables will help our customers in, in providing even better, uh, better services. 
Thank you very much, Rene, and, and of course, uh, uh, welcome again. Um, Asperio, just, just, just one quick thing, because uh, I think there was some roaring in the market over the last uh, 13, 14 months. I mean, um, being in a, a global ISP is fine, but I think if I counted correctly, three, four takeovers you did in the last year? Yeah, we've, we've been quite busy. <laughs> uh, indeed, the, 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 the past one and a half year, we uh, acquired uh, four new companies, uh, starting off with uh, Comsafe, uh, which is a uh, Dutch company uh, and had a perfectly automated setup in uh, coding, procuring, um, ordering and, and uh, invoicing uh, services. Uh, is something that we were also developing, um, but in order to leapfrog, uh, we decided to acquire the company uh, and use the technology that they already have uh, to make sure that we uh, even move farther. Uh, two other companies that you might know, uh, Brodent and uh, Global Internet, uh, are two companies that are uh, internet service aggregators uh, who were operating in more or less the same field that we are, uh, maybe on a different level, but for sure, uh, multiple customers that we share. Um, those acquisitions have all be also been finalized now since last Friday. Uh, and fourth, we also acquired Fidens, uh, which is a SD-WAN company uh, specialized in uh, VMware, VeloCloud uh, cloud solutions, uh, and Cato. Uh, and that also positions us in, in, in a better way uh, to have a lot of proof of concept that we're not only a, a aggregator, uh, sometimes people think, but that we're actually a managed internet service provider uh, and giving us even a stronger position in the, uh, in the SDUN market. Okay, thank you. So you were busy, right? <laughs> we still are. It's still we're not hard. done yet. No, because acquisition is one, but transformation and, uh, and integration yeah. is, uh, is two. So good luck with that. Congrats. And uh, thanks. And, and all the best with it. <laughs> so... Uh, we're talking about the new business models to meet the cable operators and also the ISPs, uh, future connectivity and digital demand uh, guys. So, uh, Arthur, just just for you, I mean, to, the, if we look a little bit in, in, into the business models and addressing the future uh, markets demands and the and then the and the next generation planning and in the digital area. Um, uh, do you see new business models arise or being implemented and, and, and if yes. How do, you, how do they look from your perspective? It's, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. It's an interesting question. Uh, but of course, it depends the, the angle you look to it because uh, business models, normally we think it on economic way. And, and normally uh, that's not my background, it's engineering, so I'm, I'm, I'm not looked to, to that. But to new ways of, of working and, and participating, uh, with with the players in our industry, for example, we had see uh, a huge change in, in in the business model. The way uh, submarine cables have been built, but so traditionally they have been built as a consortium uh, members these days, uh, and only with the small portions of of, of that, the percentage of of capacity or uh, mouse or MIUs or whatever we, we use it, um, uh, multiples to 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 uh, measure that capacity. And these days we are seeing uh, a huge technology change that allow us today with the STM cables to have cables with 16 fiber pairs and future will be growing probably to 24, 32, 48. We, we, we don't know yet the limit. And, and that is changing, of course, the business model and the way the industry is, is working. Uh, we are also seeing hyperscalers entering uh, heavily in this area. That is also changing the business models. But with this huge cables capacity, uh, what we are seeing is that most uh, we, the change will be slowly, I would say, but the, the big players now being owners of a full fiber pair. And, and that, of course, some of them that are to, had been traditionally the customers uh, from the operators and ISPs in the past, and these days they are also owners of a piece of that cake. And that, of course, made uh, uh, quite uh, interesting changes in, in the business models. So it, it, it obliges us and looking to, to the panel and we are very focused on ISPs as well and business models between ISPs and capacity providers. Of course, then we need to reinvent a bit the, 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 the wheel and, and, and change a bit the, the way the, the, the things we are doing. And in Angola, particularly, I'm, I'm remember a project that we are doing together with a bank entity 
that is uh, a bank that will loan money to small ISPs uh, with technology pro uh, specific projects uh, and with compromise of purchasing uh, international capacity as well as local capacities to expand. Uh, so it's, it's a kind of three ways, uh, three partners between Angola Cables, the, the bank and, and, the, and the ISPs enabled to uh, help them in growing their business and entering in areas that they have not been in the future. So are these type of, of small things uh, that really a bit out of the box compared to the traditional models we operate in the past, just as a simple customers. And now we need to be more partners to look how we could help each other and, and, could, and could help uh, growing uh, for the future. And that's, I believe, will be one of the trends. Okay, thank you, um, Benar. How is it? Um, uh, let's say on the, in the, if I may say so, the 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 Asia PAC region. I mean, you have a, a huge, huge share of that <laughs> uh, over there. Do, did you see, let's say, um, um, uh, models changing, partnering models? But what, what what can you tell us? You're on mute. off mute uh, there was a bit of noise in the background previously so um yes uh so um we've certainly seen the business models change um i mean but in in multiple facets and it depends kind of different parts of the market so if, if i talk you know if we talk first of all at the top end of the market you know where we're talking essentially about uh, the big five or what they call in France, the GAFA. I don't know if that's a term in, in, um, in uh, the rest of Europe, but uh, the, so at that end of the market with the cables that we've got, uh, we, we have around the market, you know, we, we've got the ability that with the, with cables being more open these days, you can do deals where you're selling, you know, potentially well, a fiber pair or 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 um, a sub fiber pair. So uh, spectrum, what they call spectrum. So you know, if you've got and it's 800 gigahertz of spectrum, and you can sell 200 of it to someone, and then they put their own equipment on it. So you can kind of do those kinds of deals, which probably didn't happen so much in the past. Uh, we've seen that kind of thing uh, uh, happening, or even you know, as a as a cable operator. If you own cable landing stations, uh, then you know if there's a new cable being built, actually providing the uh, landing capabilities because the the you know the the guys that have the big money on on new cables may not may not have the expertise to, or well, they do have the expertise, but but maybe the the money involved in building a new cable station and all the rest of it is a bit expensive. Uh, and if there's one already there, then uh, that can yeah, so so there are, there are options of you know reusing uh, for for new cables some of the existing infrastructure that you may have. So there are new business models around that. Um, at the smaller end, you know, still talking in the internet domain, um, I think there are well we've we've seen there are opportunities to combine uh, solutions that involve bandwidth and solutions uh, around internet peering transit etc and kind of combine those into into a more a model that uh, that makes sense for some of the ISPs um, and then uh, look at the enterprise side you know there's more flexibility in terms of using SD-WAN type solutions to to, you know, to automate uh, augmenting or reducing capacity and, and, and you know, potentially tying that into um, uh, to APIs and, and that kind of stuff. So, so, you know, there's new business models popping out really at all levels of the stack, depending on the customer types, uh, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, now, Looking on the other side, and, and Rene, maybe you, you can jump into this. I mean, what do you see? What, what are the current and future market demands and challenges, and which strategic opportunities do we see? Yeah, it's, it's good to be here in, in, in a way that we are only a consumer, right? Everything that they build is, is eventually something that our customers need and want. Um, with, our, with our setup that we have as Experio, where we aggregate 
uh, all customer traffic towards our cloud accelerated hub, uh, which is connected to multiple tier one uh, IP transit providers and internet exchange, which we already discussed a couple of times this, uh, this few, few days. Um, it is of utmost important that the best route is available towards their destination. So any investment that's being done in, in expanding sea cables, in shortening the route, in, in unlocking new continents, uh, the, the discussion that we, the panel session that we had on the uh, OTTs, uh, landing cables from, from east to west, but now also going from north to south, uh, unlocking Africa, uh, eventually that is something that our customers will benefit from. Uh, the, the shorter the route, the lower the latency, the higher the capacity is, uh, is, is an absolute customer uh, satisfaction. Um, I'm in procurement, uh, so the, the part that I also look at is, is the cost evolution. The more capacity there is, uh, if, you, if you look at the, 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 the cost that we're on IP transit, where we were um, seven years ago and, and where we are right now, uh, of course, that's also beneficial uh, to us. Um, and we see the same happening in, Ar in Africa. Uh, but the most important part is, is quality, uh, shortening the routes, getting better quality uh, and more capacity. So we embrace any cable initiative that's, uh, that's out there. Okay, thank you. So um, last thing on, on, on the models then, what are the different partnership models between uh, uh, ISPs and the capacity provider, if any? Do you... Can you say something about that? Well, I can uh, I can only talk on on how we do yeah. it. Uh, so th so that means that we we do not take part in any consortium. Uh, okay. We we do not own uh, or rent uh, for long term backhaul backbone capacity. And the, the, we consider the internet as being our uh, our backbone. Uh, I'm not saying that we will not eventually do that, but uh, at this point we don't. Uh, so we're literally a customer. Uh, we, 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 we would buy uh, IP Transit from uh, Bernard, uh, who then invests in a subsea cable in order to optimize their IP Transit routes and peering uh, from which we benefit. So we're actually a consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, over to you, uh, uh, Artur. I mean, um, uh, subsea cables and cables, I mean, uh, we talk about a huge, huge amount of investments. And, uh, and, um, uh, and it is just, you know, you, what do you get for it? Everything. But you don't see it because it's, you know, most of the time it, it's in the water or, or uh, under the ground. So, um, Arthur, how do you judge uh, the success for your investments in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the systems? Mm -hmm. Well, this, uh, today is, uh, is pretty simple and straightforward. The, um, the capacity is needs on each route, and there's uh, companies like Telegraphy and other ones that are making consulting companies making the, the traffic um, measurement. Uh, and and we, are, we, we know the areas or areas that are still not covered and that needs um, a new, new routes to be implemented or places where the capacity uh, will be needed in the future because the, capa the installed capacity is not enough. There's, of course, always some tricky areas um, that I was discussing yesterday on, a, on another panel uh, because when we look to, to the future capacity needed, uh, we could use a few arguments to say there will not be enough and we needed to build more cables and make uh, bigger investments for the future. And sometimes we can use the same, the same things to say, well, there's plenty of capacity. Uh, and, and I'm speaking about things like uh, the 5G or the autonomous car, internet of things and other, other, other type of things that, that we say will generate huge capacity uh, in the near future. And, and we need to address that and to be able to prepare that. But of course, there's also some discussions if that will be international traffic, if it will be local traffic. And the majority of it, I believe, will be local traffic. Anyway, when we look uh, to, to the, uh, the past, we could see the trends uh, of how much growth uh, each region has been. And in Africa, for example, we are, we are seeing the region with the biggest growth because the base was very, very low. Uh, um, a few years ago, well, Africa was at 20, below 20% 20 internet penetration, and, and that numbers are growing um, uh, at 50% annually. So we could say that each two years, you need to duplicate capacity installed, you have it, 
meaning that you know specifically that you need to invest and how much capacity you needed to have it just to maintain the trend um, or the year that, that we are seeing from, from the past. And, and of course, we need to look to all of these uh, elements uh, in order to, to planning uh, corre correctly for the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, Benar, you know, I mean, Telstra is, is putting as well a huge amount of money in, uh, in, 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 in the system. How do you judge um, uh, your success? Look, I mean, ultimately, um, it's judged by the return on capital employed, basically, right, over over periods. Um, and, you know, I mean, we we will focus our efforts on, you know, the market, you're never going to be able to, in, especially in Asia, uh, I mean, you know, I think Angola cables may be different in as much as they've got a somewhat unique uh, route across the South uh, South Atlantic, but um, certainly where um, you know there's many different options available. So for us, it's also focusing on the on selling and, and winning the deals that that generate the margin, right? So because there are there are some you know if you can actually go for all the smaller stuff sometimes you you actually reduce you can you can reduce your margin so it's, it's partly um i mean we'll take the telegeography uh planning uh, and we'll build based on that but you know ultimately we're then also deciding what deals we go after and which ones we we maybe uh, will not focus so much on as well in order to um ensure uh you know we we, we meet the, the best uh, um, return on capital employed it's also um i mean the good thing i guess the good thing we have is that over the years because we have a very big asia pack network we've built very close relationships with with the re with the big uh, the big buyers really big buyers um that those relationships have helped us to you know to get a better idea on what their their growth requirements are, and and since since their requirements often dwarf you know basically the others, if you can get that right, and then have a bit left over for what you know what's left uh, for the other ones, you can you can get a pretty good return overall, I'd say. Um, but then you know then there's also uh, the other big uh, input into our cable plans is is the growth of our own IP backbone. So we we have um, we have an approximately 11 terabit uh, just just our IP backbone in in Asia is now about 11 terabit. So um, that's the other the other bit. And and you know there'll be a prioritization between uh, the different businesses and uh, so that we. You know, the margins on some parts some parts of the business will be higher than others so so the priority will go obviously to the the businesses that that generate the highest margin does that make sense that that makes absolutely sense and uh, and and uh, and of course it um, but, but but on the planning side um uh, how do you do it i mean it has been already tipped on a little bit is it you you wait for the demand and then you start or is it next to all the reports you're reading and, and what's out there that you already start um, uh, planning, designing, scaling uh, uh, already? Because I, I can understand that guys like René, they have a huge demand. Maybe René, you want to quickly say something, you know, and elaborate a little bit on, on, on the demand side and maybe then uh, uh, Artur, you can start and, um, and, and then over to, uh, to, to, to Bernard. Yeah. Well, well, going back to to when the question that you asked, so so when is it successful, right? Um, and and monetization, we already touched the subject a couple of times uh, these days. Um, what we see is that uh, with the we can measure any 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 route anywhere globally, uh, continuously, depending on on what kind of customer we we have. Um, and talking about monetization and and getting a fair amount. Uh, for the service that you provide, uh, the key is quality. So if you if you, if you're in APAC, uh, one of the IP transit providers who's not present in in, in this call uh, started opening up the APAC market uh, at at substantial lower cost than than the rest. 
but when evaluating that service, it also shows, shows that the routes towards Europe uh, were absolutely crap, uh, almost unusable. Uh, and even though they're cheap, uh, it's not something that we use. So I think that the, the biggest benefit for, for capacity owners, IP backbone owners, uh, is in providing quality uh, instead of being trying to be the cheapest one uh, out there. Uh, and, and looking at demand, um, well, the market is growing substantially everywhere. Uh, but also, uh, and that maybe might be a bit of a surprise, but uh, one of the biggest growth markets is still Europe. Uh, and um, uh, those traffic uh, hardly ever ever leaves uh, Europe uh, with all the setups that we uh, that we have. So, um, is there a growth? Absolutely. Uh, we're continuously adding capacity on on almost a monthly basis uh, to expand it. No, actually, what you need from 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 Benai and from from Arthur is 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 the top notch quality. Yeah, and 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 especially know your strength, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us exactly where you're good at. Uh, most likely, the part that you're good at is also the part that you want to sell because that that is your core business. So if you if you have the best route in APAC from APAC to Europe, uh, tell us, uh, and we will evaluate and see if it's beneficial for us. But knowing exactly what you can do and where you're the best, that is important for us. Uh, and people saying, "Well, we're globally the best player," uh, sure but there is always a local player that has a better strength in a certain region. Uh, and that's what we want to know. That's beneficial for us uh, and beneficial for our customers eventually. So that's the demand you have for, 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 for Arthur and, and, and Benai. I mean, maybe um, uh, Arthur, you, you can elaborate a little bit on that, but what's, what's your take on that? I mean, that's the demand that the, let's say the ISP has. How can you address it? And, and also next question is, or the B question is, in the future, how how do you how do you how do you work around, uh, along with it? How do you plan? How do you design? How do how do you invest? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, it's uh, uh, the ISPs are an um, important uh, part of our ecosystem, and we need to look to towards what are their needs, and the corporate side as well, operators and so on, uh, so that we could focus and try to address that demand by building in, in, in the areas where they need it. Of course, when you look uh, broader to uh, worldwide, you know already what are the routes that, that have most traffic. For example, the North, North Atlantic Hemisphere connecting United States with Europe is traditionally the route with more capacity and where you need to invest more. But uh, it's always interesting also to look to different regions, like, like, like we, we made it in Africa or connecting Africa to Latin America that was not there. So you need to create new patterns uh, there's other, other things that are also influencing uh, uh, currently, and that's also something that, that normally we, we don't train to, to, to look to it. That is the geopolitical uh, issues that we have currently. So there's routes traditionally that have been used for many years that are now being changed because of uh, some conflicts of interests, for example, connectivity between United States and, and China, Hong Kong or whatever. But we could look to it and, and think, okay, these are bad things. Or we could look and say, this could be very positive as well, because then uh, we are changing uh, and we are addressing markets that have not been covered in the past. And we could develop other, other areas and other regions. That, that, that is also important, even for the ISPs. Of course, we could collaborate in other areas. For example, ourselves, we are also trying to facilitate the life of the small ISP. For example, in Brazil, we have a lot of them. So creating specific products to them that could also help them uh, in, in making that, that, that uh, coverage on a different way and being able to reach other places that they have not been able to, to, to make it in the future. So creating situations like virtual routers or uh, remote peerings to allow them to interconnect in Frankfurt, for example, uh, to the biggest IXPs or creating um, IP gamer uh, flavors to address the community of gamers that they have in their in their network. So these are the type of things that as Angola Cables we are working in order to try to address the needs of the ISPs, looking towards what are their needs uh, and, and how, how, how we could fulfill them. So it's not always thinking in terms of let me build a new submarine cables because we will not build a submarine cable because of one or two ISPs. But if the route is interesting and then on top, of course, you could put add values 
by creating products that they could use instead of them needing to get their hardware in Frankfurt. We just tell them a virtual router uh, or a remote peering agreement with Ikix or whatever. And, and this, this helped the guys in expanding to new regions very easily and, 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 and quickly. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Benar, over to you. Um, how's, how's Telstra, uh, let's say, uh, helping the ISPs? But then I also want to hear it from the other side. How can the ISPs help you guys? Okay. Um, so, <laughs> um, look, so, uh, in, in, I mean, kind of uh, re um, coming back to what uh, Eric, um, Eric Bedmacher was saying, yeah, um, I... I mean, the the quality angle is is certainly something we we focus on, and and we're very focused on just Asia Pac. So we're not trying to be a global provider. In fact, I think it, especially when it comes to internet, it's it's pretty hard to be a global uh, provider and provide the best internet quality because you're kind of if you're global, you're trying to balance your business in multiple regions, and. Um, and so you won't necessarily connect to all the providers in the best region for the performance that is needed, right? So, um, so that's why our focus is really on the internet perspective side is very much on the Asia pack uh, business, making sure that intra Asia is as good as it can be. Uh, Asia to Europe and Asia to the US is also as good as it can be, but we're not gonna you know, provide internet in Dallas or in Ashburn or, or or in uh, even in Rome, we'll leave that to 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 the Sparkle guys. Um, <laughs> so, um, and so, yellow, um, he, he, he's happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because you know, literally, no one can provide the best internet quality everywhere. It's just it's just simply simply not possible. Um, and and the other thing is, you know. Uh, I think um, you know Eric's. Re uh, the, I mean, Xperia's requirements are quite specific uh, for enterprise customers, and the, well, one of the troubles with internet is you you basically got two groups of customers, right, using the same platform. You've got your core kind of residential users who are kind of you know using Facebook and probably watching TV and all that kind of stuff. So, and so a lot of the internet platforms are designed. You know, we'll, we'll, there'll be thousands or millions of users using it for that, and and they're having to. You, you're trying to build a network to cover two aspects: that those users who are residential and who are really just trying to get, you know, pretty much local content, and then your business users who have much wider requirements and are typically trying to replace an MPLS network where they're used to having um, latency that is a specific amount to a particular place. And unfortunately, with the internet, with peering the way it works and and the politics of the internet and all the rest of it, sometimes the routes are just not the best routes because, uh, you know, it's going via the US when it should be going straight from Rome to Frankfurt or something like that. I mean, and in Asia, that, that can be that can make a really big difference because the distances in Asia are quite, you know, are so huge. So if you take a detour, it's a big detour. Um, so look, that's that's kind of the quality angle uh, in terms of ISPs, um, you know, working with us, I mean, the key thing and what we try to do, I think it, it is really important to, to be able to build the close relationships with, with the major, the major customers, because that way you get, you know, the, the worst thing for planning is if you've got customers that, you know, they're on the, on your network and then a year later, they're off your network again, and then they're back on it again, and then they're back off it again. Um, and then, yeah, you, 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 you're gonna have a hard time managing the growth. So if you, if you can manage, you know, provide a quality service, um, the diversity that's required, diversity is kind of particularly important these days. In Europe as well, in Asia, it's particularly important because of the, the earthquake zones that, that sit in the region and all the rest of it. So it's building those strong relationships so that you're getting feedback which is driving your your planning, uh, your your forward planning, because otherwise, you know, the last thing you want as a as a submarine cable operator is to have invested millions of dollars in all this equipment, and then suddenly you've lost a bunch of customers and you haven't uh, 
you can't fill that and you know, you're definitely not going to make your return on capital that way you're trying to really run the network as hot as you can basically uh, from, from a from a transmission perspective on the ip of course you don't want to run it too hot because then you get congestion but certainly on the transmission side you 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 want to run it hot thank you so from uh, the translator of the enterprises being an isp renee how will you uh, fulfill their demand? Let's turn it around now. What can you put oh, on the it's, table? It's a chicken and egg story, right? And 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 I like exactly what uh, Bernard is, is saying. Um, uh, the internet is is a public place, and it all depends on routes and peering and and uh, agreements that we that there are. Um, and doing a detour in APAC uh, will double your latency. So. This is also one of the reasons why we always use multiple offloads uh, to ensure that we can always find the best route uh, that is publicly uh, uh, available. What can we do for them? Well, um, uh, I think the biggest um, challenge is the more our customers grow, the bigger we get, uh, the more customers you get. So, so um, uh, we will be expanding uh, XCA hubs uh, in the near future. Uh, meaning that we will onboard more and more countries. Uh, that also means that we shift from reselling a layer three service to what we call an on-net service where we build our own uh, actually ISP um, uh, service on top of that. Uh, that also means that we will need IP transit capacity in those countries. Uh, so yeah, if we grow, uh, you grow uh, and eventually we need each other. So I think that's that's good. Yeah, I think I think you're convicted to each other, right? <laughs> but Artu and uh, and um, and uh, Bernard, I don't think you mind, right? I mean, if there are the ISPs who who can bring you the growth, and on the other side, you can show them, hey guys, we're good here, we're good there, and the quality is, uh, as as you said, don't be a global player. Yes, you can try, but you have your niche, and you know where you're really good, and you bring the let's say top-notch quality and the low latency. Uh, and of course, the reliability is is as high as possible. Uh, then I think that uh, that that both of you are um, uh, both parties are convicted to each other and for for, for a bright future. I guess, right, Artur? No, for sure. Uh, we, we we need each other. Uh, we, as a submarine cable operator, we need the local ISPs to grow and to to grow their network because we have, of course, corporate. Uh, customers or customers that request us to deliver on a specific place inside Angola, for example. So I need always the local partners that have that local tail of the back holes to be able to, to address that needs as I'm trying to address their international needs. So it needs always to collaborate and to be able to create uh, uh, low latency routes, protected routes, uh, and, and then uh, add the best coverage uh, they could in order to, to be helpful for us and, and we could also uh, be uh, helpful for them. So it's, uh, we always need to work in a straight partnership, yeah. But now you wanna add something to it or do you fully agree? Um, yeah, look, uh, I, um, in terms of working with, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we, we try definitely to build the, the closest relationships with with our, I mean being being a, a, a regional player is I think the, the other thing is, is from the planning perspective is you've got to keep a really close eye on on, on what's going on politically in in your region uh, uh, and um, you really it's very difficult to do that on a global basis so you know for instance in our region right now you've got the you know the the current um, tensions between the US and China that are really changing the landscape in in, uh, in East Asia massively. Um, submarine cable, you know, previously submarine cables from, from the US were able to land in China. That's now no longer possible. So that's changing all the routes of the new cables to go through third parties, through third countries like Taiwan or the Philippines before going to, to Hong Kong. Um, you've got US companies moving out of... Uh, uh, moving out of Hong Kong in some cases, not, not all of them are moving out, but um, uh, so, you know, having your ear to the ground with regards to the regulatory environment, um, working with your customers in that region, 
it's kind of hard to do that on a, on a, on a global basis these days. And, I, and, I, and we're also seeing that you know, what we saw, especially last year, right, was you had, uh, you know, within three months, we had our IP network grew by 80 percent. Um, and um, you need to have capacity to be able to build, grow your network. And, and that's just our IP network, right? So we had to add literally a terabit within weeks for some of the, for some of the big guys um, because suddenly Teams was exploding, Zoom was exploding, um, and all the rest of it, right? Now, you know, as we move into a world of... Uh, you know, uh, COP26, climate change, uh, potentially will create new laws about travel. Who knows what's going to happen over the next 10 years, right? As, as some of this stuff bites. So um, you've got to remain uh, f flexible. And, and to do that, you, you've got to have a control over your assets. Uh, that's what we, we, we think. And, and that's why we control our assets in Asia. And um, and uh, because it gives us the flexibility that's required, because you know there's no way you can plan all you like, but I mean no one planned for COVID, that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, we've we've seen that we've seen that help us to be honest, because because we were able to add that capacity so quickly, uh, that's actually drawn customers to us uh, who've seen that. It, we can still keep running. The network is still not running hot. It's still not congested. And so, uh, yeah, so we always get congestion from time to time on this peering party or that part peering party, depending on 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 their connectivity. Because it's, the internet's not just one carrier, it's interconnection between different carriers. So, um, uh, so yeah, that's kind of uh, why we feel that it's necessary to focus. Okay. Thank you, Bernard. So um, looking ahead, uh, Arthur, if I may, may start with you before I go to, to, to Renee, um, scoping a little bit the future, what, what, what's, what's out there? What, what can we expect? What is there? Uh, you know, what, 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 what should, should, should we look out for? What was, and I'm not asking for the crystal ball because <laughs> that's always the difficult part, but thinking about planning, what do you think is, is coming towards us and, and, and what, what should we look out for? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that growth will be there for sure. Uh, with, with, all, with pandemic or without pandemic, we could see last year huge growth in terms of capacity needed, so, uh, above 50% in some, in some regions. Uh, this year, the trend is, is much lower. Uh, so we have a, a type of new normal with the probably grows in the areas of 50% instead of 50 or 60% like last year. But that, that, that will, will, will keep, will keep um, uh, doing it. And uh, there's also new technologies um, on the way that, that will, will for sure contribute for, for that, that rule. New applications that are still being created right now that, that will be there and will change a bit like the Zoom that we are using now. Uh, two years ago, Zoom was nothing. Today, they have um, uh, big traffic behind with video and, and audio uh, going on. So there's there's for sure uh, good good and positive things for the future that will appear for us and that will demand um, uh, uh, fast fast adaptation uh, of of the telecom telecommunication operators in order to fulfill that that needs and, and to, 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 to accompany the, the goal uh, that, that will be needed. So that's that's the way I see it. Of course, things like I speak about 5Gs, of course, will be decreasing a lot. The latency, there's a lot of new deals uh, of new applications that will appear there, uh, new services, new business models that will appear uh, because of that huge capacity and low latency uh, uh, but but of course we need to, to address and to be able to plan a bit for the future uh, so that we could pre be prepared for it. Okay, Th thank you so much, uh, Rene. Uh, from your angle, um, what's your outlook for the coming period? Well, it's looking good. <laughs> <I hope so. laughs> that that that's one thing. Uh, to 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 stick a little bit to the subject, uh, as already mentioned before. 
uh, I think Africa is going to get a huge bo boost. Uh, uh, all, the, all the capacity landing, all, all the better routes that are coming there uh, is going to unlock a great potential. So, so I see that one as, um, uh, as one of the biggest gains. Um, looking at technology perspective, there is so much out there. Uh, nobody doubts anymore on, on that you need to shift from a traditional MPLS network towards an internet-centric network uh, combined with a software-defined network or, or um, uh, in, in, in the cloud, even the solutions that you have. So that trend is ongoing. Uh, what is next? Uh, of course, 5G was the subject. Uh, we, we got the Elon Musk uh, uh, low-orbit satellites, uh, the, the, the OneWebs. Um, all great inventions for us is just another mean, another, another building block to, to connect our customers in the best possible way. Uh, so we will embrace that. But uh, uh, on capacity by, by, um, uh, wise, I, I think Africa is going to be booming. Okay, thank you. Uh, Benar, some famous last words for the future. But what do you see? What, do you see? <laughs> what, uh, well, what should we watch out for? Look, apart from, you know, uh, 3D holographic conferences, um, but maybe we're not quite there yet. Um, so it's hybrid or it's... I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that one, uh, Eric. Um, <laughs> I'd rather be in Rome. <laughs> um, so, uh, look, I mean, on the cable side, um, obviously, you know, uh, yeah, we're starting to see uh, 400 gig interfaces uh, probably going to hit the market soon in, in a big way. We're seeing the Internet exchanges already looking to implement 400 gig. I think once that starts taking off, that's going to potentially give another hike to capacity. I mean, we saw a huge uh, growth in capacity in Asia Pacific when uh, there was a move from 10 to 100 gig, which, you know, in this, in my region actually only really happened um, maybe about uh, two, you know, two years ago now. So uh, we, we've seen the, the traffic really spike since that. So I think that's going to happen uh, when we move to 400 gig interfaces as well um, uh, in Europe. Um, uh, to start with in Europe and North America, Asia will probably come a little bit later uh, as usual. Um, so that's yeah on the capacity side. Then kind of in the, in the world of um, you know, enterprise, obviously, uh, yeah, SD WAN. Everyone's SD WAN RFPs are coming out by the dozen uh, every every week. Um, every in, every company is moving towards that. The thing I can see though is that enterprises often have a pretty simplistic view of uh, using the internet, um, and they don't understand. You know, moving from MPLS to an internet-based network is not as simple as it might seem for. Uh, because the tendency for carriers is often to buy the cheapest uh, I, I, internet uh, provider in a particular country. And that's not necessarily the one that's going to give you the best internet performance for a corporate application. I remember really uh, clearly uh, when I was, I used to, uh, I've always worked from home and I used to use a operator in France called free. Uh, it's not free, but um, it's cheap. Um, and, and then we had to start using salesforce.com and I had that spinning wheel on my desktop for uh, a long, long time. And, um, and look, if we're all working at home and using uh, home internet a lot of the time, the, IS the ISP that you use even for your home broadband actually makes a difference. I mean, I'm uh, not trying to sell Orange here, they're the incumbent in France, but you know, you're gonna, you, get a better, you get better performance from them going to these kinds of things. And, and look, it's the same uh, internationally. So you've really got to, yeah, you really got to look at who you use as your underlying internet provider. And I think uh, a few enterprises are going to get burned along the way um, uh, as they they buy a combination of internet and SD WAN, thinking it's all going to work the same as before, and they suddenly find that the routes are not quite the same, and you can't control internet quite the same way as you can control. Um, uh, the MP and MPLS network. So, yeah, there might be a few bumps in the road on that side, um, but um, well, you know, some of us are already thinking about uh, how we best control that uh, kind of thing. Um, 
uh, and, and yeah, I think a few of us on this on this panel are. So um, that's yeah, that, that's the other side. I think is that's gonna that's gonna change. Um, I would say. Okay, thank you so much for those uh, for for those. Uh... Nice, uh, nice last words, and uh, and uh, Benar from I would like from from Telstra, I would like to thank you very much. Always an honor having you. Like why uh, Arthur from uh, Ango, Angola Cables. So thank you so much for your expertise, guys, and uh, the dinosaurs uh, from <laughs> from. <laughs> From, uh, from from the telco, especially when it comes to infrastructure and, and, and service on top of it. And Rene from Asperio, uh, live here in Rome from the Netherlands. So um, all the best and uh, drop me a call when you take over another company in the, in the future. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, all the best. Uh, thank you so much. And before we end this, uh, this so session... So you're not looking to take over Eric Stockham Associates just yet? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not comment on that one, but thank you. <laughs> so, guys, we were we, we were discussing uh, the new business models to, to meet the cable operators and the ISP future connectivity and digital demand. We uh, looked into the, uh, the the different business models um, uh, and addressing the future market demand from both sides, from the ISP side, and also from 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 the from from the cable and operator side. So, uh, again, I would like to uh, dearly thank my, my 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 panelists. I would like to thank Seaborn for for hosting this uh, this, uh, this 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 panel session. Of course, um, uh, for now we we came to the end. So, I would like to uh, thank the audience out there. Uh, hope you um, uh, connect soon to uh, to carry communities for, for for all the webinars and the, and the GCCMs we're we're organizing. And of course, I'm six and uh, and uh, Smartkick and Exatel, but for foremost, um, uh, Sparkle. Uh, thank you so much for 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 hosting us and uh, and making sure that uh, that all the messages of all the panel uh, discussions over the last two days were broadcast around the world live here from the beautiful and warm city of Rome. Thank you so much. So okay. with this, guys, thank you. Bye bye. Stay tuned and keep on following us. Thank you. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.